is going on, beautiful people? Welcome on to another second. episode. Of Let me just say this. So I wanted um, to, because it's hard to put the links on my channel because a lot of times people don't know what the the information is. But this is this goes out to um, a friend. I'm not gonna say their names. Um, <clears throat> that has gone through certain similar things I've gone through. And um, <clears throat> I just wanna point out the things, and this is coming from a male narcissist point of view. <gasps> what is your problem? This is coming, coming from a male uh, narcissist point of view who actually is getting therapy. He's getting help <clears throat> to save his marriage, right? Because certain tactics are things that narcissists do destroy relationships. So let's continue. Let me see. Damn it. The narcissist code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammett, better known as mental illness across all social media platforms. This is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a diagnosed narcissist and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and I also validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. So today's episode is going to be about how narcissistic people use other people to heal. Air quotes out to heal. Narcissistic people use other people to get over and deal with their pre previous relationships and things like that. So, <clears throat> one of the main questions that I get on my page, uh, on any of my pages, on any of my platforms is, I, like, why do narcissistic people, why do they move on so fast? Why I just want to say that he's out in nature, which is a good thing, I think, for anybody that has some kind of mental illness to do, is to get out in nature, take a walk, you know, ground yourself. But... <clears throat> Excuse me. Listen to what he has to say. These toxic men and women and non-binary folks move on so fast. Like, what is what is going on with them to get to the point where they just can't, you know, be by themselves for any period of time? Like, when we broke up, two days later, they were with someone else. Why, why, why? Because narcissistic people, y'all, this is a simple, this is a simple version of it right here. I read Dr. Ramadi's book, and she said narcissistic people, uh, cannot get validation from ourselves, but we cannot inner validate. Self validation is extremely tough and damn near impossible for narcissistic people to do because we don't feel like we're worth it. I mean, this is, honestly, I don't feel like I'm worth it. I feel like I'm never going to be good enough. That type of stuff right there. So, unlike you, who is not a non narcissistic person, possibly, possibly, I'm joking. Um, unlike you, who is a non narcissistic person, you can take time to heal on your own. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it can be. Yes, it can be traumatic. The trauma bond exists, and yes, it can be painful. But you can still do it. It is definitely possible for you to heal on your own. You know, you can take some time for yourself, deal with your own emotions, process your own emotions, and validate yourself. I, as a narcissistic person, would have trouble doing that. So instead of dealing with the pain, the shame, the and all this stuff that comes with a, a breakup or a possible discard or that things like that. I would rather throw myself into someone else, love bomb someone else, and become obsessed with someone else, so I don't have to deal with those. So love bombing, love bombing is when a person just over compliments, over just overdoes these love notes to a person, right? They get they come in real strong, right? They come in real strong <clears throat> with the with the object that, and they don't think of people really as human to them. They're just like objects. They're like objects to these people. So when they love bomb, they come in real, real strong, real strong love bombing, giving compliments, giving gifts, doing all kinds of things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So love bombing is an actual thing when it comes to uh, narcissists. They come in real strong with the gifts. And, you know, the attention, the, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're, you know, oh, I love everything about you. Oh, even your flaws. They're so attractive to me. That, 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 that. Let's continue. That's love bombing. Feelings. Because they're, they're, those feelings hurt, but I, I don't want to have to deal with them. I can't deal with them. So I need someone else to help me deal with those feelings. You see what I'm saying? So we use other people to heal. And that and that's why people keep asking you, like, are they going to treat the next person better? Is the next person going to get the same version or a different version of this person? Yeah, 
the next person is going to get love bomb, perhaps just like you did. <laughs> so at the beginning of the relationship, it's going to be good, but it's going to be inauthentic because they are trying, especially if y'all relationship just ended, their new, the beginning of the new relationship is going to be inauthentic. Let me just say this. He talks about an ending. So a lot of times these people that are narcissists, right, <clears throat> they'll, they won't even let the, the relationship end with the one person before they jump in with an, another person. So usually by about a month, a month and a half is when this person has pretty much uh, solidated this love bombing with this next person and this next person once they solidate that relationship that it's going to be brief because these relationships don't last really that long with narcissists but once they get the the you know they anchor it down they get the love bombing in and all this stuff and they think that they've got it all figured out with this other person, then they will try to end the relationship with the previous person. And then they will be cold blooded. They, um, <clears throat> I'll let him explain. Because they're trying to get over you. They're trying to process the shame and the anger and all this stuff that comes along with breaking up with somebody or somebody breaking up with them. Especially, especially, my voice cracking y'all. If you discarded them, if you broke up with a narcissist, then they, yeah. They're definitely going to be in some pain, some anger, and some rage, and some shame. So they're going to use the other person, love farming the other person, to help deal with and process those feelings, and to help validate them, to help validate ourselves, to show you that, yeah, we are enough. I am enough. Because guess what? I found somebody else, and this person loves me, and this person is obsessed with me, and I replaced you really, really easily. So it wasn't me. It was you. See how that works? You by yourself. You by yourself. I'm not. So that means that I'm healing and you're not. That means I'm over you. You're not over me. And that's just the end. That's just the, the simple version of it, y'all. Because the, me as a narcissist, yeah. Like, and that's the difference. Which I know a lot of people ask, so what what's, what's, what's makes you so differently? Is that fact that the last time, like, in 2020, when my wife left me, I wasn't, uh, yeah, I could have went out there and jumped on the dating apps and found somebody really, really quickly. I could have done that. I thought about it. It came to my head. I'm like, well, I guess I'm about to be single, so I need to go ahead and get, get, you know, hop in something else. Mm -hmm. But I just looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, then what's the point of all the therapy? Why are we going to therapy if we're not? Okay, so fortunate for him, he saw there was a problem. <clears throat> he saw there was a problem in their marriage. He saw that they were having conflicts and stuff. Uh, and this, this is the thing: the narcissist is always going to think the other person is the is the problem. They're the, the there's something mentally wrong with them because there's always a, there's an argument. There's always something going on. But the narcissist never owns the shit they do in the relationship. They never do. They never own it. They never own how the fights get started. The patterns, right? There's a lot of patterns, a lot of patterns concerning these narcissists. Okay. When they jump into the next relationship, love bombing, this whole shebang, right? The whole shebang. But he, he fortunately was already getting therapy or in therapy because he wanted to save his marriage. He loved his wife. Like he, he, to the root of who he was, he realized, you know, he, like he said, he thought about leaving and just jumping into a new relationship, love bombing, doing all that stuff that the narcissist does. But in the core of who he was, he wanted to save the marriage. So let's continue. Just, and we're not going to apply that right now because I'm in a little pain, because you're in a little, you're hurting a little bit, because you're angry. Sit in it. Deal with it. So I started dealing, I was literally said it. I cried in the bathroom floor. I got angry. The next day, I was reading the Bible. I was like, I'm not going to throw myself into nothing else. I was like, regardless of whether or not she comes back, I'm not going to throw myself into another relationship. I'm not going to throw myself into another ingenuine, like a disingenuous beginning to a relationship. If I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a worker. <clears throat> the American dream. Lucky for him, he was very consciously aware of what he was doing because most of the time the narc doesn't, is not, doesn't actually, doesn't care. They might even be consciously aware. They just don't give a fuck. Unfortunately. I know it's sad to hear for somebody that's going through that kind of thing, but that's, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? That they don't care. They're, they're, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They have no real compassion. They have a fake sense of compassion and they have, what's the word I'm looking for? 
empathy, have zero, really zero empathy. Let's continue. I'm going I'm, uh, I'm to work. <clears throat> I'm going to work on myself. And if she come back, cool. If she doesn't, I'll be working on myself with somebody else. And I know that sounds narcissistic, but that's, but that's genuine. This is me genuinely working on myself for myself. And I, 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 in turn, I will be better for the next person. I just would. Most narcissistic people are going to say they are going to tell you that they're going to be better for the next person to hurt you. I didn't tell her that. I was just doing it for myself. That's the main difference right there, y'all. I was doing it for myself. I didn't move on to someone else. I worked on myself. I kept going to therapy for myself. It wasn't for her. So many people are just like, yeah, I love my wife, but it was. I didn't go. I don't go to therapy for her. I do it for me. I don't work on myself for her. I do it for me. And when I work on myself, in turn, it trickles down into my relationship, you know, into my parenting. It trickles down into all other aspects of my life. That's what I tell people. I'm like, this is how it goes right here. The trickle-down effect is real when you're dealing with narcissistic people. It just is. I'm going to process things the way I process them. That's just how, I, how it is, y'all, for me. You know what I mean? For me. This is how I process things. This is how I process the pain. What One thing I want to say is if you're a woman and you're dealing with a narcissistic man, one of the red flags of a, a person being a narcissist is somebody that really can easily detach from their children. Somebody that won't build a bond with their children. That's one sign. One sign of, of this type of mental state, right? Narcissistic mental state is it's very difficult. If they feel like the mother of that child has wronged them, you know, either through child support or whatever the case may be, when they feel that and they don't build the relationship with their child, that is a big, clear red flag of narcissism. Run from the motherfucker. If he can't get his kids on the weekends or, you know, spend time, build relationships with his kids or his child, fucking run. If he can't even do it with his own flesh and blood, he's never going to do it with you. It's going to be very short lived. You're going to get love bombed and then he's going to run out. Let's continue. And it hurt. Like I like I had to sit in the shame. And mo look, that's the difference right there. Most narcissistic people don't want to sit in the shame and deal with it on their own because we can't. We need somebody else. We need somebody else to validate our feelings in our existence. So we put ourselves in another situation where we throw ourselves into another relationship. We love bond the other person. We have to get to know the other person. Give me like in, when I'm starting a new relationship. Give me the blueprint. Tell me who I need to be to get you to fall in love with me. Tell me. I need to know. So did you hear that? That's a, another key component. This The narcissist is going to listen to what it is that is valuable to you. What is emotionally valuable to you? They're going to listen to the emotional valuable things that, that really resonate with the core of who you are. And they're going to imitate it to get you to fall in love with them. They're going to mimic or present themselves as that being or that person that they know they've studied you to be able to be that person. And then when they fucking flip because they can't hold it for very long, then they're running out. They're gone. And you're like, what the fuck just happened? What the fuck just happened? Okay, let's continue. Tell me who I need to be to fall, get you to fall in love with me. Give me the blueprint to your heart. I need it right now. Give it to me right now so I can stop hurting myself. Not to help me be happy. Give me the blueprint to you so I can stop myself from hurting. So I can stop obsessing and being angry for a few minutes, for a little while, over this old person. Over the ex who broke over me. Over, this, over my wife who left me. Over your husband who left you. Narcissistic people, y'all. That's what, like, we got to move on quick. We use other people to heal with. It's like we go to somebody else and we're like, we're like, we, let's just say narcissists are like cell phones. When we, when we get discarded or somebody breaks up with us, our battery percentage is on like 5%. It's blinking red. It goes, we go in a low power mode. Like everything in our lives get dark. Just like the screen of your phone when you, uh, when the battery is low. So instead of, instead of just going, going and sitting on a charger, being able to charge ourselves up, we can't do that. We have to go find somebody else, another source, another supply, another person, plug ourselves into them and charge ourselves up. Get that validation. Get Do you hear that? He says a narcissist will plug themselves 
into the new love bomb being the, per the person they're love bombing they're going to charge themselves up with that person's energy that's why anybody in the relationship with a narcissist always find the, finds themselves emotionally depleted they find themselves physically tired because this person is diff it's it's they're draining all the energy from you and they will cling they will definitely they're going to cling on to somebody they think is very upbeat and positive and then bring them down in the relationship to a negative a zero point energy point zero emotional point zero and once they've depleted you they're already working on the next energy source let's continue and supply for someone else and i know what you're going to say lee that analogy was fired because i keep coming. look off the cusp off the cusp of my mind off, of the off dome. the top of my lips comes the fire analogy so yes that's off the top of my head Woo! <laughs> Get dark like a phone screen. Y'all like that, didn't you? I know y'all like my new backdrop, too. This is like, yeah, this is not me. Uh, This is not uh, a green screen. This is like literally my backyard, like my uh, <laughs> my house. My kids are just in there sleeping. I was just early in the morning. I wanted to come outside and do my video. But yeah, here's the spider web to show y'all. Yeah, we have to plug. We have to plug ourselves into someone else, so the weird, the, the pain goes away, the hurt goes away, the embarrassment, the shame goes away, and the anger goes away. But guess what? Just because, just like, just like cell phones, narcissistic people, we can plug into more than one person. So that's why a lot of times, even though I'm plugged into this new supply, charging up from them, I can still come back to you and try to get some supply from you. I can reach out to you. I can be with this new supply, helping myself, helping validate myself, but I'm coming back to you. I don't let you go. I don't let you move on. I keep trying to reach out. Notice how the narcissist, and he's a, he's a self-proclaimed narcissist. You know, he knows he's dealing with this, right? He calls the people that these, these, that they get into relationships supplies, like a possession supply. They don't think of the people as a real person with emotions and feelings. They don't think of that. That's why when somebody ends a relationship with a narcissist or the narcissist ends a relationship with you, you feel like what the fuck happened? Like you got hit by a semi truck. You don't know what the fuck just happened. These are the traits. Let's continue. To you, I keep trying to contact you. A lot of narcissistic people, one person is not going to be enough for them anyway. So they're going to keep reaching out to the old supply, the ex or whatever, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to get them back simultaneously while being in this new relationship, trying to heal. Hey. Let me just say this. This is this information is definitely to help you rip the mask off of a narcissist because a narcissist is wearing a mask when they come and they um they uh start start to converse with you when they start to want to get into your energy supply like he was talking about they're wearing a mask they don't come authentic a narcissist absolutely will not come authentic to you there is nothing, you would think you know this person. There's nothing you really do know about this person because the person is absolutely unauthentic. They are not authentic at all. I, I want to do more on this, but I'm going to stop here because it's at 18, 19 minutes.